Hungry Trilobite Podcast would like to start by acknowledging these fine conventions. The Hellmouth Con. The Hellmouth Convention is back, and it's hosting a spectacular event in the place of all places, Torrance High School, the shooting location for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Join us June 15th, 2024, for one day only. Proceeds benefit the Los Angeles LGBT Center and the Ron Glass Memorial Scholarship. Visit thehellmouth.org for details. SoonerCon 32. Oklahoma City's longest-running premier pop culture convention returns June 21st through 23rd, 2024. Prepare for three days of cosplay, crafts, tabletop gaming, and legendary guests, all in the friendly town of Norman, Oklahoma. To give back to the community, fundraisers, and a live charity auction will be held. Visit SoonerCon.com to reserve your membership. We are here at Fan Expo New Orleans with Allison Bodie. How are you doing today? I am doing awesome. Thank you so much for asking. It's a Sunday. It's the last day. It is. We were talking <laughs> about how there's definitely a different feel to each day, and this yes. is a day of mixed emotions. Yes, a lot of mixed emotions. <laughs> but uh, to let our audience know, you are an artist, a very talented one. Thank I've been you. checking out your work for the past couple of days and before that online. Yeah, thank you very uh, and much. I would like to direct, direct people to your work. What got you into doing what you do? Oh, uh, so... That's a very long and winding journey for the most part. I've been doing art, drawing and painting and just doing a lot of little things since I was young. Um, and when I was, after high school, I did college and I did uh, sculpture. And that was my first introduction to sculpture. And from there, it kind of led into everything that I do now. So I have a background in special effects, I have a background with theater, and I have a lot of things in performing arts that I just wanted to blend with fine arts. So I do a little bit of both um, and I just now consider myself a mixed media specialist or a fabrication artist Mm -hmm. because I I am very much just process oriented and I love to play with materials and explore and see what comes out of it. (laughs) And you used a lot of really nice highbrow fancy words there but we're at a comic (laughs) convention. We are, we are. Which I believe is high art and you probably do. (laughs) I do, I do see it as high art. I am a fan of all art pretty much. But that's a conversation the rest of the world doesn't always want to have. True, very true. So when you see somebody like yourself who's taking it seriously saying I'm going to make something uh, I mean, I've seen... Yeah. What's your favorite piece? Let's, let's go there. Um, I will go ahead and say that um, the majority of what I sell at cons is usually 2D art. But I, I, my love is with it 3D art when it comes to sculpture. Or I like to do um, props and set pieces, costume pieces, all kinds of different things, cosplay things. I don't work particularly with any cosplayers other than just most of my clients are actually people that come to my booth and then ask for commissions later. So I, I do a lot of independent work. Um, I have done, uh, like head pieces for drag queens. I have done, um, full sets for, for shows, for plays and stuff. It's just a little all over the place. Um, but definitely if I can get my hands on doing sculpture work or 3d materials, that's my joy. Sure. <laughs> But um, my point I'm getting at is somebody comes to your booth and they see this and they don't necessarily say, this is a person who's into uh, fine art, but I think it is. And I think that we need to start realizing that, you know, somebody drawing Superman today is no different than somebody drawing Hercules a thousand years ago. I agree. I completely agree with you. I mean, if you look around you, art is everywhere. Yes. It's in the designs that we see in brochures and signs and that's on TV. Everything, everything involves art. It's just, you know, like recognizing that there's a person behind it every single time and who is that person that's creating and what is the creative process to me it's fascinating so I, yeah <laughs> i agree yeah I, I mean i remember at a time you know first watching movies and stuff when i was a kid it's like i didn't care about all the names behind what, what i was watching right <laughs> but there's a certain point when you realize no that's why this is so cool is those yes. people are getting involved yes absolutely especially like animators like um i i have always have a, had a love for animation so, um, animated movies and TV shows are kind of my jam. I will always be the adult child that is going to go out and watch all of them. <laughs> but it's also because I deep dive into, ooh, like, what is the process behind this animation? Or, you know, like, I also am a writer, so I, I enjoy looking at it from a writer's perspective of the way people craft a story. So I'm just very, um, I'm very much the kind of person that will fangirl over <laughs> just what people are doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- this 
to take one example, let's look at like the early Disney mm-hmm. animated movies, yeah. like like first yes. five, all the hand animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> Snow White plus the people more out. Yes. I, every time I watch those, the thing that gets me every time is how short the credits are. Yeah. Like a modern movie, the credits go on almost five minutes. Yes. And they're, you're lucky Huge to get teams. Yeah. Yes. Now, granted, that's partially because some people didn't get the credit they deserve. I'm going to acknowledge agree. that. I'll agree with you there. <laughs> However, you're still dealing with 100 people instead of 100,000. Yes. Yes. And, I mean, the introduction of technology really skyrocketed because then you need so many people on your production team doing individual jobs. Like, you could just be doing lighting for all the animation now because... Um, one person will be doing um, rigging for the character, one person will be character design, you know, like it, they're teams for everything now. So, yeah, the amount of people involved is is crazy, uh, especially when you get into the very big TV and movie productions. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the fact that there's still an individual behind every part is important to me. Mm-hmm. So, I, I like that, you know, like credits. <laughs> It's one of those things like, yes, I like to sit through the credits because I like to actually acknowledge the, the hard work that goes into it. But that's not everybody's jam, and that's fine. <laughs> uh, sure, no, and I get that. Yeah. But I, mean, I see, you just said you're very process-oriented. This conversation is definitely bringing that up. Let's talk about your process. Okay, Um. so I have uh, a little bit of all over the place in my arsenal, if you will. But um, for the most part, I will always do concept work like a a concept idea and then I kind of jump in with materials and I'll just play around for a while um so if I'm doing say um one of my past commissions I did a uh Raven Queen mask headdress piece for a cosplay and this was just from a um, person that came out to my booth and we became friends and they loved my artwork and so they commissioned me to do this over this past summer actually And um, the process behind that was I actually have like a life cast of my own face that I will sculpt on top of. And then I take a mold of the sculpture and then I will usually cast it in plastic or sometimes I'll use um, two part epoxy clay, which is um, just gonna be an A to B mixed together and it's really hard, um, like a rock when it cures. So um, I will cast, my materials, whatever that's going to be, then it's, you know, working on the finishing where you've got to sand everything down, paint it and all that. And then you're taking notes, by the way, because I need to Absolutely. This. No, this is the thing is that I, I share this information with freely with anyone that comes to my booth mm-hmm. because I am always here for like, yes, get hands on. Like if you, if you can't find the information on how to do it, you know what? I will help you. <laughs> so I love being able to share this information, but yeah, it's, it, it can be like a hardcore process. Um, it's time consuming sometimes, but to me, I, I thoroughly enjoy like every step. Like I like seeing it become something. <laughs> but I used to also be employed um, as a mold maker and sculptor doing scenic design in Florida. So um, that has been a background that really got me some good skills on working in very large projects. Um, so, uh, that mold making and sculpture work and all that kind of stuff is intimidating to most people. But I will always be the person that's like, yeah, here, let me help you. I'll help it be less intimidating. <laughs> sure. Now, is there any storage concerns with that mold once it's actually finished and not needed at the moment? Um, I keep mine mostly in, like, if you want to have it in a, like, temperature controlled room, that's great. Um, the only thing I would really say is don't leave it out to the elements. Um, if it's going to get rained on and have sun beaten down on it and all that kind of stuff, yes, your materials will rot <laughs> and, and ruin. But if you keep it in a garage or even like an attic or just uh, boxes or tubs inside your house or whatever, you can use those molds for years and years and years. Um, I usually use a um, like a pretty good um, uh, grade silicone with everything like uh, you don't need all the fancy equipments like the gas chambers to degas things. You can use just like techniques in pouring and different things like that to get just as good results. So it's it's um, one of those things that everyone thinks they need all the fancy equipment for, and you don't need that much fancy equipment to actually get the job done. <laughs> 
Good to know. I've, I've, trust me, because I don't always have the budget for the fancy equipment myself, so I've had to learn how to get around all that. And see, this is <laughs> something that people don't get. Almost every independent art I've talked about, I yeah. said, filmmaking especially, but also comic books and cosplay, I will get people who are like, I need to have this thing mm -hmm. in order to get started. And I'm like, no, because no. people yeah. did it without that. You can too. Yes. Yes. It's going to be work. And I know that's a dirty word to some people. That is true. That is but... very true. Like some people don't like the extra effort that it's going to take. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you do need the equipment. Sometimes you have a process that absolutely needs like a pressure prop, pot or something. It's, if you're working with resin and you're wanting clear resin and stuff, sometimes that's essential. I learned how to make... Um, uh, basically prosthetic level eyes, um, special effects eyes and stuff to go in animatronics and things and that process requires a lot of equipment to do in order to do it right. Can you still get results that are great without? Absolutely. You don't necessarily need it. You can get it, but sometimes if you really want that extra, extra quality, it is necessary. But I have found so many alternative ways of getting just as good results <laughs> for not as much money. <laughs> so when people are going by your booth, what's catching people's eye this weekend? Is there a certain piece that is really just knocking it out of the park? Well, recently, just especially because I was traveling for this con, it is a brand new one for me. I've never actually been to New Orleans before, so this is even my first time to the city. Um, so I started doing, um, a little project back in October because October usually has a lot of drawing challenges that come through and I decided that I would just try and, um, create pieces of artwork about the size of a trading card. And for me, it was a challenge because I was like, okay, this is meant to be small designs. Um, so like I could refine my process and have, um, like a nice little result at the end and a big like goal of mine was just to, to finish as many as I could. And because um, I think a lot of people, what they don't realize with the art is that it is constantly practice. Like you don't just stop no. learning, you no. keep learning. I've been doing this for, for my entire life and I'm still learning. I, like I feel like I'm learning brand new things every single day. So that was my main focus of like having um, original mixed media like pieces, so tiny versions of fine art, if you will, that are affordable and portable for people, because those were my main goals of people going through cons. I understand that you're buying a whole bunch of stuff, and there's a lot to look at, and you don't want to carry around big, heavy things necessarily, mm -hmm. and you want your dollar to go as far as you can when you're at a con. So I was like, I'm just making my own personal art trading cards, if you will, <laughs> and so I have... Um, ones that are based off of fandoms that I love, and then I have a few other ones. I'm starting a tarot deck of my own, and so I have some of my own personal tarot designs in there. And then I just have some that are just my own original art, just some things that came out of my imagination that I enjoy. So there's a mixed mixed bag of things to find at my booth. <laughs> that is one of the things I did notice when I was going through there, is that yeah. you have a huge range of stuff, which is why I kind of want to say, hey, what's yeah. really... What's really moving right now? What's clicking? Because sometimes you get to a con, and you, even if you've done three that year, it's true. That show, people are like, "I need to get the dragon on the skateboard." Yes. And that dragon <laughs> has sat time. there for three cons, and nobody's touched it, but it suddenly moves. And I have that. I have some artwork that I will take from show to show to show, and it just stays with me. And I've had some that can even be with me for a couple of years, and then the person finds it, and I'm like. I guess I was just waiting for you. You know, like that's the way I, I take it. But I have noticed with this particular con, anime has been the big thing. And um, some of the anime fandoms that I have at my booth are, um, we have some Jujutsu Kaisen, and we also have Sailor Moon and Inuyasha and um, some Chainsaw Man in there. So like, uh, uh, I, I kind of just pick and choose, oh, definitely some Hayao Miyazaki Studio Ghibli as well. That is a huge inspiration for me. But that was also from like the film animation aspect we talked about earlier. But that had, those are the things that have connected with fans the most. And so it's, it's really nice when you get those people to come up because then you get to geek out together <laughs> a little bit over all the fun stuff. I, I do love that feeling when there's terms of like, oh, I really like this. I'm like, yeah, I really like it too. Yes. That's why I made it. Yes. That's because it, you don't realize that you're paying that person a compliment just by yes. getting interested in what they made. I, I totally agree with you. And that's actually 
Um, so me and my friend that are both working here for this particular con, um, that's one of the things that keeps us doing comic conventions and events like this as it is because we really enjoy talking to people about these fandoms. We really enjoy finding the nerds. <laughs> so um, we we don't ever come with expectations on, oh, are we going to sell this or oh, are we going to do that? We come with, I hope we have good conversations. I hope we meet a lot of really cool people. I hope we get some fun connections out of this um, experience because that is what we take with us moving forward. Right. Yeah. So I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a convention. It's getting people together who really do enjoy this. Yes. Nobody here is here to have a bad time. Nobody's grouchy at these yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've met a few. But <laughs> yeah, it does happen. But everyone's going to have a bad day. Somewhere. I'm not saying it never <laughs> happens. But it's, right. it's really, really hard to find this bad yeah. average. Yeah, in general, everyone who's coming out is out to have a good time. And they're, they're down to enjoy what is offered here. And I, I think that... Every con that I go to has something special and something different and a different energy, different vibe. Yes. And I have a great time exploring what those are. And that's also the city. You know, all the cities have their own vibes. Mm -hmm. So you get different people will react and different people will have different conversations. So, I mean, I learn something every time I go to a new place. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to toss this out here. I, I, I just published a book called The Convention Survival Guide. It's oh my gosh, on. Yes. that's great. And this is something I cover in one of the first chapters is that every con is different. Yes. And that is something you need to bear in mind. If it's your first one, yes. choose relatively wisely. Yeah. Find a city you're going to like, find a material you're going to be interested in, find something that's the time of year you're going to feel free to take the time off of work and go. Exactly. And people are like, what's the best con out there? And they say San Diego Comic Con, which, it hey, is, I, yeah. I see the mm -hmm. argument, but that doesn't mean it's the best con for you True. your first time out. Yes. And a lot of them can be overwhelming. They're so huge. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people that, um, because my biggest con that um, I am involved with and I have been for uh, several years now is MegaCon in Orlando. And it is a huge con. And on those Saturdays, I've had a lot of people that are like, you know, just literally body to body. Like, you, you can't even get through the aisles. There's so many people mm -hmm. going through. So it can be an experience that, you know, you have to be prepared for <laughs> going in. And, um, but even so, like, everyone, vendor, patrons, everyone has had a good time. And and that's that's something consistent across the board is that no matter what, it's still a good time. It can be stressful and it can be frantic and it can be outright chaos at times. Yes. <laughs> but it's still great experiences. <laughs> and, you know, people have to realize I've not been to almost, somebody asked me, how many cons have you been to? And I'm like, I at least 30, that's oh, a low man. number. <laughs> I mean, if it's I really, higher than mine. <laughs> okay, and I've never been to one where somebody big hasn't canceled the day before. And oh that's yeah, just, it, it happens all it the happens time. You just time. roll with it. Yeah. And something, the ones I've worked, there's always something weird going on. There's some mm -hmm. some tragedy, that, and it's like, and we just had a conversation this morning about something that came up that was unexpected. Mm, unexpected, yes. And we had some thoughts about it, but you definitely know, did. <laughs> it's always something. Yeah, and it's just part of the experience. And that's the thing is like I'm not gonna let that ruin my last day. Absolutely not. Anything like that, I'm still going to enjoy myself, and I'm looking forward to my last mm -hmm. day. It and you were right saying that you know each day brings its own emotional like mm -hmm. situations too because like I'm worn out in many ways that mm -hmm. I can't even express. So a big part of me is like yes, I get to rest after this, but then I'm gonna go home and I'm be like oh. Now I'm done with it, and I, I don't have another one for another month. You know, <laughs> like, the stress is going to start all over again. But at the same time, it's it's almost like you get this really big high, and then you have to, like, just wait it out until the next one. <laughs> it's it's the con blues. Is the, it is the con blues. Yes. And I used to get it with performances, too. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, I don't know that. I mean. Uh, well, yeah. It's the same sort of thing. It's okay. like once you get through this big event, you have all these, you know, like, high-flying, fun times, and then it's just, it ends suddenly. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's the con blues all over. I mean, because I, a con, for again, people that don't know this, it's a big party. Mm -hmm. And it's in some ways a reunion of sorts because yeah. there are people you only meet at these things. Yes. Like yeah. you and I have been talking over email for like a week and a half up yeah. till now. Mm -hmm. We've met them for the first time two days ago. Right. But it's like, okay, I get it. We we work well together and I'm probably not going to see you for months 
At yeah, least, if I don't years. know. I don't know where we'll cross our paths again. You know, I'm not sure. I expect we will because I'm not going to be stopping this anytime soon, sure. and I'm assuming you're going to keep going as well. <laughs> yes, and there are so many people in my contacts list that that, that fits that description. It's like, yes. wow, I'm going to see you, but who knows when? Right. Yes. And, and you get so psyched when it actually does happen. Right. Yeah. And I even had like, um, so I posted about our booth to social media on that very first date, and I had one of the exhibitors that I have. Um, now kept in contact with for the last two years that I met at Fan Expo Chicago comment and start talking to me about different things like I keep in contact with a lot of exhibitors and a lot of people that I meet because we make friends with the vendors to either side of us every single time we do a con so I still have contacts from the very first cons I did back in it was Steel City Con in Pennsylvania those were my first cons I've heard that's yeah. really good I've never <laughs> been that way and I'm from Pennsylvania oh really awesome that, that's awesome I saw the Pennsylvania patch and I was like that's where I went to school so I'm not originally from Pennsylvania but I did live there for almost two years um so Steel City Con was my first con and when I started it was fairly small like mm-hmm. it felt kind of small like I would maybe say just a hair bit smaller than like what this was so still relatively you know cons are big enough <laughs> yeah so fan yeah. Expo is not <laughs> when, a small con. When, when you say you know small that's relative they're still huge but um uh it has been growing like crazy ever since and i i did um two with steel city um but then i relocated to florida and so i haven't been back up there to do another one but I am, now that I've been settled in Florida and getting back into the con game and all this kind of stuff, I am starting to travel out of state more. So it may get back in the cards at some point. Um, <laughs> I actually would love for them to um, get a bigger venue because I think they're growing so much that mm-hmm. they are going to need a bigger venue. And when they do that, I would absolutely love to try and go back. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes the venue really does become the limiting yeah. factor. And you develop such a rapport with that one place. It's like you don't want to grow past them. It's like yeah, exactly. the old pair of shoes you don't want to throw out. It's hard. Yeah, it's very difficult because, I mean, you're building business relationships too the entire time. And, and like, essentially all of this are just different levels of business. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of... Um, things you have to navigate around and like I said I'm just keeping an eye on it I'm watching it from afar for now and then um I'm I know we've talked about possibly trying to get out to some uh cons out on the west coast um because we have some friends that live out that direction so a big motivating factor for us when we try a new con is is there anyone in the area that we can go see like can we knock out an extra little thing here Mm -hmm. and make it extra special for us so that's something that we look at (laughs) when we're picking (laughs) I was like, hey, is there something I can see in that state or that city exactly. that I haven't gotten to yet? Yeah, because it's, it, I mean, it is a work trip. Yeah, we work ourselves to death, but at the same time, we're going out every night to have dinner or we're, you know, like at least exploring a little bit, talking to people, seeing what's around. Um, like, I, this is my first time experiencing New Orleans. Now I have a, a, a good idea of, like, I can come back and go see this. I can come back and go do that. You know, like, those are exciting ideas. <laughs> yeah, I really regret that I'm not going to be able to see the World War II Museum while I'm here. Just the, the con hours and their hours do not match. Yeah, yeah. And I, for me, I'm, like, leaving to go straight back to Florida in the morning. So I don't sure. have time to go look either. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I will head back here. Maybe next year I can cancel yeah. in an extra day or two. Right, yeah. It's always something, like, got to prepare at least a little bit either way. Um, but with so many things in the works, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Absolutely not. So when it comes to what's in the works, what are you working on right now? You mentioned your tarot card deck. I am What got you into that? Um, so uh, over this last year, I think it was something that I've always, I've, I've always been a fan of it, just in general, just because I think the artwork is what drew me in more than anything else. I enjoy just the idea of it. I think it's a a, a fun, I like, I guess let me preface this, I like things that seem to have added meaning. And if you have all these card decks that have added meaning with beautiful art, I'm very intrigued. And so I kind of started just here and there collecting a few cards myself over the year, uh, over this last year. And then um, it was some events that I was doing where tarot was going to be like a pretty forward aspect of what people were looking for in those events. So I was like, hey, um, this is a good art project for me. This will be good practice. Let me go ahead and just try and see how redesigning my own art car- like tarot cards would exercise my brain. That was how I started it. And then they were kind of a hit with the people when I did the event and started like showing them um, 
off to the people um, there. And I got a lot of interest in wanting it as a full deck. And I was like, okay, if I'm getting all this like feedback now, I'm going to go ahead and commit to, I don't know how long it's going to take because the full tarot deck is like 78 cards. <laughs> but it is now a project that I'm like, all right, for each, each event that I do, that's a goal I can set of at least do, try and do five. And eventually I'll end up having a full set and then when that full set is done then it can be released into the world and the people that have seen it and wanted it will be able to have a full deck of cards but then i have my actual like original artwork as a trading card existing mm -hmm. out in the world too and so then there's like this extra special thing that people will have like a tangible original artwork from me that can also be seen in the tarot deck when it's finished so it was just more of a personal project, like built out of just some little thing that I enjoyed myself. It's a personal project. Yes. But what you just said to me is actually an extremely smart way of doing that from a yeah. business perspective. <laughs> so I, I saw that come together. And I'm like, okay, I see what you did there. I yeah. like it. And, and that, that's that's how you make this work. That's how you right. take something that's fun yes. that, that you're doing for your own enjoyment. And like you let it pay for itself at yeah. least, if not something beyond that exactly and so i'm not i'm not setting a time frame for myself so that i don't like burn myself out on the project immediately mm -hmm. because the truth is i am doing it amongst all the other things i'm doing as well <laughs> so i've i've taken some commissions from this con that i'll be working on i am also going to be working on new pieces for the next con next month and then i have um uh other little side jobs that i do um just in general back at home like I'm also a, a teacher and things like that so I I am filling my schedule but I'm not trying to burn myself out on my schedule <laughs> and that is hard it is very hard I mean especially you know yes. in the 21st century any adult out there who wants to do something so tough. <laughs> it's like the way the world is right now you right. have to make things pay for themselves otherwise they don't happen yes yeah and and that's exactly it is like let me figure out how I can plan all this through and I can make my money steadily mm -hmm. all the way through the project, and then hopefully the payoff at the end will be worth it. <laughs> it's the way I'm going. <laughs> so how are people finding your work? Is that something you're doing mostly through social media? It is mostly through social media, and I am trying to get some... I'm, social media is not easy for me. <laughs> I have a hard time keeping up with it. I'm not one of those people that um, am checking in daily. But I do try to make sure that I post new work whenever new work comes out. And I do try to post for every event that we are involved in. So um, Instagram's a really good one. I actually do um, share quite a bit to TikTok if I can. Um, because a lot of my work, especially when it's like uh, sculptural work, it just does better um, sometimes on TikTok. And I don't know why. Um, but I'm okay with continuing down that route and people want to see the work, my work there, great. That's a, one way I can share it. Um, I do have a website um, and uh, uh, I plan, I need to actually update update that because I also have an online shop as well if anyone's interested in going to those. But if you're just wanting to follow and see what's going on, Instagram is going to be the most reliable of the social medias. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever stream yourself creating in process? I have. Okay, because I yeah. said that would work really well that for you. That was where TikTok went. Okay. Uh, really enjoyed me doing my creative process just on camera. <laughs> How about Twitch? I have never tried Twitch. You could do both simultaneously. I'm not trying to. I just you think know, that sounds like a good idea. That is a thought. I just hadn't, I, I just hadn't thought I, about you it. You can't I'm do not, it all. I'm not I on know. the platform. But, you know, like, that's a good idea, and I will look into that because... I mean, if I'm doing, you're right, if I'm doing it anyway, why not just make it available in more places? <laughs> well, Alison, I appreciate you meeting with me here. Yeah, I know you, you got to get back, I've got to get back, but I've had a great time talking to you, and you'd be welcome back anytime. It. Yeah, you know, Erin, thank you so much for reaching out to me. I'm so glad to have this conversation, and I've enjoyed every bit of this con and meeting you. So, likewise, likewise. Yeah, and I you. hope to see you again <laughs> at some con somewhere. Yes, and we will cross paths, for sure. <laughs> <laughs>